Hello and welcome to Let's Develop with Maven in Eclipse. This episode is going to be about uh, how to create projects with Maven and I'm going to explain this in the context of the Eclipse integration M2E. Maven is a build automation tool. It's uh, in that sense much like for example Ant or Makefiles but uh, Maven favors uh, convention over configuration so it tries to give you a default project setup um, that you can use so that you don't have to configure much to get started. Of course Maven is completely independent of Eclipse but I think especially for beginners it's much easier to use the Eclipse integration because then you have an UI that tells you uh, what you can do and what you cannot do and you can still later on of course uh, use the, the Eclipse project created within Eclipse, outside of Eclipse and uh, use all the tools and gadgets and plugins and extensions you have available in the Maven world. So uh, without talking any further I think it's best we jump right into it. So what you can see here is a fresh setup of the uh, Kepler, Eclipse Kepler distribution for Java developers. I just downloaded it and started it up. Um, and we're already set up to begin because uh, the Eclipse Kepler distribution for Java developers already includes the Maven in integration M2E. But for older releases or different distributions, you can still uh, uh, easily install the Maven integration uh, over the marketplace. Um, or you can Google for the for the update site for the older Eclipse releases. If you are bound to any of those, uh, there's an update site that gives you the M2E integration for Eclipse. So first thing I'm gonna want to do is create a Maven project to get started. Um, so I do new and select other, and then we have Maven here in our list, and we can create a Maven project. Uh, we, and Eclipse provides us a wizard for that. So I'm going to select Maven project, that's what I'm going to want to do if I create a project from scratch. You know, there's some default settings, the first interesting thing is probably this uh, create a simple project, skip archetype selection, uh, archetype selection, sorry. Um, an archetype is like a project template in Maven, so you could create uh, projects for example for spring extensions or something like that but uh, for the sake of this tutorial I'm just going to skip this and uh, get started with the most simple uh, project structure possible. Going to hit next and then we actually already uh, dive into the Maven world. So for, for Maven project we have to provide some information um, the first information we have to provide is the group ID for our project. Uh, group ID is something like a, like a package in Java, so it groups all your projects basically. So for the sake of this, uh, this let's develop, let's use the group ID let's develop with. And then we have the artifact ID which is the actual project identifier. So I'm going to call this tutorial1. Next thing is the version. Uh, in Maven co convention projects have three digit versions so it's major, minor, micro. But uh, the interesting thing is uh, the suffix here it's minor snapshot which indicates that this is a development version as opposed to a release version where we would have 001 right now. Then we have the packaging. Um, packaging defines what kind of uh, artifact you want to create in the end. So for a Java library this would be a jar. A different possibility would be example a WAR file. Uh, if you have uh, uh, an application server uh, resource. And then uh, we can optionally provide information like a, a descriptive name and a description uh, just to to make it look a little nicer. This is not uh, this is not requ required, but I'm going to insert it here. We're going to uh, ignore this parent project properties for now, 
um, maybe I'll do another episode about uh, parent project and multi-project stuff. And yeah, having inserted all this information up here, we're actually already done. We can finish the wizard and wait for um, Eclipse to create the project, which it just did. As you can see, uh, it took over the artifact ID as our project name and it created some, some folders and actually even some files for us. Um, let's go over those. So the first folder it created is actually a source folder f that is intended for Java files. I already mentioned that Maven values a convention of a configuration, so by convention the default, uh, the, the source folder you're going to add all your class files to is called source main java. And then there's another uh, source folder um, which is called source main resources and this is intended for all your additional resources like image files or property files or text files or something like that, whatever you need uh, in your application. And these two, the contents of these two are actually what ends up in your application or in your library or whatever uh, you're going to build in your project. And then we have two additional source folders which are called source test java and source test resources. This is actually what is intended for all your tests you're going to write. So uh, following this convention that the test folder and the main folder actually separated enables Maven to uh, build your library and separately build your test stuff so you can keep your main uh, sources and your test sources alongside and let Maven divide them uh, from one another so you don't have to distribute them with your library in the end. Next thing is uh, the link to the uh, JRE that's not that interesting. Source is the folder where all those uh, those uh, source folders reside in. Uh, target is the folder where Maven is going to uh, create all the files during during the actual build of the of the project. So there's uh, a classes folder below where your class is going. There's a test classes where your test classes are going to be compiled to and uh, your, also your resources and the jar file it's going to create in the end and stuff. It, this is all going to be below target. And then in the end there's the POM XML file. POM stands for Project Object Model. So this is the configuration file of your Maven project. This is the, the core part you're going to need uh, to work with Maven. And we're going to have a look into this file. So as you can see uh, Eclipse or the M2E integration provides you with a nice uh, interface for uh, interacting with this POM files and you can see here actually the very same information we entered in the wizard. But below this there's of course a, a clean pure XML file and you can see this by selecting this tab. And um, as I already mentioned, Maven values a convention of a configuration. So most of the things uh, that are important for this project are already defined by convention. And you all, all only have to define the differences, which are the very project specific things for now. OK, let's do some first little easy development here. Let's create a class called demo which is going to have a public method returning a boolean set get say get bool and it's going to return false by default. And what I want to do now is I want to create a test for our demo class. So I'm going to call this demo test, place it in the test folder, and now I want to use JUnit to write my tests. But as you can see, JUnit is of course not on my uh, on my class path, so I can't use it right now. And this is the first time I can actually take advantage of Maven. Um, because 
with Maven, I don't have to add a jar file manually, download it from, from somewhere on the internet, but it can just tell uh, Maven to manage this dependency for me. So I, I go to the dependencies tab, say add, and then I search actually for JUnit. And it provides me a long list because there are many, 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 many possible dependencies that somehow have JUnit in their name. But the one I gonna want to use is the JUnit, JUnit uh, dependency. So this is gen JUnit 4.11. Um, and I'm gonna want to add this as a test dependency. So uh, it's not going to be included in my software release, but only used for, for testing my software. As you can see now, uh, there, there pops up a field called Maven Dependencies, and there you can see the JUnit 4.11 jar file. And you can also see that there's a path to uh, this jar file, which is in my home folder under .m2 repository. Um, and this is the local cache that Maven uses to place all the dependencies and all the, all the uh, plugins it downloads. Uh, so it doesn't have to download them every time you build, but only once and check for updates every once in a while. Another thing you can see here is that it also downloaded the Hamcrest Core 1.3 uh, into my Maven local Maven repository. And this is actually because JUnit defines a transitive dependency on the Hamcrest Core. So Maven not only manages the dependencies you explicitly uh, define in your POM file, but it also manages the transitive dependencies of your dependencies. So you don't have to care about uh, the things other projects you depend on need because this is configured in that project and Maven will take care of it for you. Okay, let's return to our test. And as you can see, uh, we now have uh, the JUnit, uh, JUnit on a class path, we can use it so we can define a test and say should return true a demo thingy which is new demo uh, assert true demo get bool and then of course we have to add import static Assert this one right, just add all of them. So, so we wrote our first little tests. And of course, we can execute this test saying run as JUnit test as we usually do that in Eclipse. And uh, it's failing right now, that's intentional because I want to show you how this looks in the Maven world. Because now I can not only um, execute the tests in Eclipse, as I usually do, but I can also uh, run a Maven build to uh, execute my tests. Actually, not only the one test, but all the tests. If I would have defined more tests, I would find them all. So, how do I do that from Eclipse? I do right click on my project and say run as, and then you already see that there are a couple of Maven specific options. And uh, there's, there's a normal build which is going to compile your stuff. There's uh, a manually defined build you can do. There's cleaning up which will basically uh, remove all the things you have in your Maven build. This is like Project Clean Eclipse. Then you have some more and one of them is Maven Test. And this is what I'm going to use right now. So I execute Maven Test and as you can see the console popped up and showed us something. And this is what I want to discuss right now. Uh, the first few lines, are because I did not configure a proper logger, I'm just going to ignore this for now and concentrate at, at the other information. So what Maven does, as said, Maven is a command line tool completely independent of Eclipse. What Maven does uh, when it's, it's executed, it searches for projects and it finds actually one project, which is our tutorial one in version 001 snapshot, and it's going to build it. And then it is going through a so-called life cycle. Um, it's going to start managing your, uh, your core resources, your main resources, it's going to compile your main classes, 
it's going to manage your test resources, it's going to compile your test classes, and then it is going to execute uh, your tests uh, in this phase of its lifecycle. And then you can see that here the test protocol begins, it found the test we just specified, which is tutorial one demo test, and it executed the test and actually it failed. So it indicates that there is a failure in the tests. It even tells us that the should return true test of tutorial one demo test fails. And it tells us that the whole build failed because as we can see down here uh, in the test phase, there were test failures. So let's assume that I now quickly fix uh, my complicated program returning true here and then I re-execute the maven build by doing maven test again and then we can see it did the same things it found the project it managed the resource and the test resources started executing the tests this time uh, there was no failure the test run was successful and it indicates okay the build was successful overall which is really nice. So the last thing I want to show you is coming back to the uh, dependency thing. I want to show you how this looks like in the actual XML file. Um, as you can see here, our change in the dependencies tab actually changed the XML file in the background. It added a dependency section and added therein a dependency for the group IDJ unit, artifact IDJ unit version 4.11 scope tests, which is exactly what I selected in the UI wizard. And this is how dependencies are actually uh, declared. So in the XML file, you will find all the dependencies of your project. And uh, since all these files are present in the Maven central repository, um, they can be resolved on any machine you are going to put this uh, this Maven project to and run the Maven compile. It will automatically resolve all the dependencies you have, download them. Uh, of course, given you have an internet connection, we'll download them, we'll have them available so you have project that will run on any machine out there. Yes, I guess this is it for this episode. Uh, there's, of course, many more things to say about Maven, about what you can do, uh, specific things, uh, and even more general things. Uh, I'm pretty sure I'm going to make a couple of episodes in the future that will treat the one or the other uh, aspect of Maven. But I hope for now you could take a first uh, impression about Maven out of this tutorial, and maybe you use it in a project and if you have any ideas, any feedback, want to know anything, uh, don't hesitate to drop me a comment and uh, I will see what I can make out of it. So stay tuned and see you next time.